want to give a little bit of background on me. I'm an independent consultant in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I've worked, I have a PhD in geochemistry from Princeton University. I've worked for over 25 years as a geochemist, as a researcher, um, and also for state and federal agencies <coughs> and environmental groups. Um, and I'm also chief scientist for eTech International, which is a nonprofit organization working mostly in Latin America. So um, this is kind of what I do. Um, I, and I'm a geochemist, so I look at the results of the tests that they do on the ore and the waste that comes out of the ground. And depending on the mineralogy and other things that I'll talk a little bit about, that can give you an indication of the contaminants that might come off of that deposit. Okay, so um, this is a picture of acid mine drainage. I don't know if, how many of you have heard of this term before, um, but it's um, probably the number one environmental water quality problem associated with so-called hard rock mining, which is you can think of as metal mining. Okay? And there's been a lot of unremediated contamination that's come out of these um, deposits. They were all, so there was a gold rush in the kind of 1860s, 1870s time frame. There was another one in kind of the 1970s, 80s, and now there's another one. So, um, but the remediation is still needed. And acid mine drainage, once it starts, it's very difficult to turn it off. It's what's known as an autocatalytic reaction. In the 1800s and the 1980s, et cetera, the, everything was underground mining, and now they're starting open pit mining, which is a lot more disruptive to the landscape. Okay, so rather than digging tunnels and going down and you know, pulling out veins of ore, um, they're just digging a giant hole and taking everything out and putting the waste rock and the tailings um, you know, on the surface of the earth, and they will stay there in perpetuity. Uh, leaching, leaching contaminants. Um, but all four of these are planned to be open pit um, excavations, even though the ore is in these little veins that really would be better developed as an underground mine. But it's cheaper for the companies to do an open pit excavation. Uh, the main contaminants of concern are arsenic and mercury. Um, and these, mercury in the past has been used to amalgam gold. And if you've heard of um, artisanal gold mining, a lot of it happens in South America, Africa, Asia. Um, mercury is mixed with the gold ore, and then the gold goes into the mercury, and then you take the mercury and do a retort, which is basically you're heating it up. And a lot of the miners are just, you know, people who are trying to make a living, um, very poor, and then they're exposed to the mercury and have a lot of contamination. In this case, the mercury and the arsenic are actually naturally occurring with the rocks in the area. You have a not, lot of naturally occurring arsenic in Nova Scotia. Um, the background arsenic, that means without mining, is generally less than 25 micrograms per liter. The range is 5 to 100 micrograms per liter. And just for comparison, the aquatic life guidelines are 5 micrograms per liter for health of fish. Okay. And for us, for drinking water, it's 10 micrograms per liter. So even in areas that are not that influenced by mining, you do have some naturally occurring arsenic in the rivers and in groundwater in this area. However, if you go to areas that are mining influenced, the concentration is around 10 times higher. And if you look, you get the same exact location for arsenic, antimony, and mercury. Okay, so arsenic occurs naturally with the gold. And then antimony is a metal-like kind of substance that is similar to arsenic, but it's incredibly toxic to humans at even lower concentrations than arsenic. And it's also um, toxic to aquatic biota, but there hasn't been very much work done on it. So in a community uh, or an area like this where the fishing <coughs> is incredibly important, these are important things to know about um, in your water. And then mercury, there are very high concentrations of mercury in the same exact location. So these are naturally occurring. If you leave them in the ground, you're not going to have much of a problem. However, if you dig the rock out of the ground, cut it up into little pieces, and then you know, put it on the landscape in unlined impoundments, then you are going to have a problem. 
And uh, there's a researcher at St. Mary's University that's found incredibly high levels of mercury in aquatic bugs um, in that area in the southern part of the province. And then the fish eat the bugs, we eat the fish, et cetera, and it goes up the food chain. This kind of information is important because you have unique water here that is not going to be able to handle acid mine drainage coming into it and protecting the salmon fishery, your water that you drink, et cetera. So um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is pretty much all the mines that have acid drainage, that make acid drainage, that is a perpetual care maintenance and treatment situation. We have mines from 4,000 years ago, you know, Roman times that are still producing acid today. So this perpetual care, maintenance, and treatment, when you have a mine, those are kind of three different things. The care and maintenance is always there, okay, because these waste deposits stay on the surface forever, okay. Um, in 2006, I did a study with a, a mining engineer named Jim Kuypers, who's in Montana, and we did a really the kind of this study has never been done before and or since. We looked at the predictions and environmental impact statements for what the water quality was going to be during mining. And then we looked at some case studies to see what actually happened at the mines. So we reviewed 104 environmental impact statements for 71 large mines in the US. And we had you know, a definition for a large mine. And we did this comparison for 25 case studies um, what was predicted versus what actually happened. And what we found was that three quarters of them underestimated impacts to water quality, okay? They said, so in other words, they said in the environmental impact statement, we don't think there's gonna be a problem. In the United States, and probably here too, if you say we think there is gonna be a problem, we're gonna exceed standards. We're gonna exceed standards for protection of fish, standards for protection of potable water, you won't get a permit, okay? so. They said, we're going to be fine. We don't have a problem. And then we looked, and 75% of them actually did exceed standards for protection of aquatic life or drinking water.